Bonjour my friends, I'm Frankie and welcome to Club Foodie. I grew up eating a lot of French dishes like bœuf bourguignon, poulet chasseur, bouillabaisse, coco vin, vichy soise, blanquette de veau, and so on. <laughs> the same applies to desserts such as madeleine, éclair au chocolat, millefeuille, crème brûlée, and more including this mouth-watering one. <laughs> In today's episode, I'll show you how to make my crepe Suzette. To me, this is the ultimate dessert. With thin light crepe soaked in a beautiful orange-infused butter that has some Grand Marnier and lemon cello in it, <laughs> This is the perfect grown-up dessert for you and your guests. So my friends, let's get cooking. We'll go ahead and start by making the batter. In the jar of a blender, we'll add whole milk, two large eggs, as well as an egg yolk, then room temperature melted butter, some powdered sugar, and to make it from scratch, Click on the top right corner of your screen. We'll also add pure vanilla extract and a small pinch of ground sea salt. We'll place the lid on and process on medium speed until the ingredients are mixed. About 20 seconds. That's all. Next, we'll add all-purpose flour and process until well combined and the batter is smooth. We'll probably have to stop it and scrape the sides of the jar before processing again for 30 to 45 seconds. Crepe batter is super fast to make. So now we'll transfer to a medium bowl and let it stand for at least 30 minutes, but longer is better. The reason why we do that is to allow the gluten to relax and the bubbles to settle. Before we go further, to me, this is an elegant dessert. Therefore, we'll make it that way by using a zester, not a grater or a microplane. Otherwise, it will look pedestrian. We want long, fine strings of zest and we'll do the same with our lemon. Next, we want to make some segments with the orange. It makes the dish look prettier. So we'll cut the ends and discard them. Then we'll remove the peel, making sure there's no pith attached to the flesh. And if you wonder what is pith, it's the white part right here located between the peel and the flesh. And it tastes bitter. Ugh, we don't want that. <laughs> it's pretty easy to make segments, and here's how. Using a sharp knife, we'll cut along one of those membranes and then do the same with the one right after it. We're basically cut in between membranes. That's all. See what I'm doing? And then here's one segment. I told you it wasn't complicated. We'll place it in a bowl while cutting more segments. The trick is to fold one membrane and cut along the next one, and we'll keep doing it until the orange is all used up. When it's done, we'll squeeze the juice of what's left from the fruit into the bowl and discard it. All right, let's make some crepe. In a large skillet over medium heat, we'll brush on some butter at the bottom of the pan. When it gets warm, we'll add about a quarter cup of batter and swirl our pan around so it evenly covers the bottom. We'll cook until golden brown which should take about one and a half to two minutes. Now, as we see the edges getting cooked, we'll gently run a spatula around to loosen it. When this side is done, we'll flip the crepe over and cook until brown as well. As soon as the crepe is cooked, we'll transfer it to a plate and place a piece of wax paper to prevent from drying out. We'll continue making crepe until the batter is gone. Next, we'll make the sauce. In a larger skillet, 
on medium heat, we'll sprinkle on some granulated sugar and gently caramelize it. It should take about two minutes for the sugar to start melting. When it gets to this point, we'll add butter and stir until both ingredients are blended and the mixture turns into a gorgeous caramel color. If the heat is too high, simply reduce it to medium low. To this, we'll add one tablespoon of orange zest as well as one tablespoon of lemon zest. We'll quickly stir them in the butter mixture before adding orange juice and lemon juice. And then stir very well. By the way, my heat is still too high, so make sure yours is not. It has to simmer gently, like this. Now, don't do what I say because I made a big mistake by adding the orange segments too soon. It was an amateur move. They should have been added after the sauce has thickened. You'll see what I mean in a few seconds. Now, we'll increase the heat back to medium and let the sauce simmer so it thickens a bit more. Just before adding the crepe, this is when we should have added the segments. It will still taste good, but unfortunately, the segments will be in pieces instead of all. All right, let's move on. So we fold the crepe in half using a fork and a spoon and then half again so we'll end up with cute little triangles. Next, we'll pour in some Grand Marnier and a little bit of limoncello. We'll place the crepe on serving plates, spoon the delicious sauce over, add vanilla ice cream and garnish with the remaining orange zest. And my friends, these are our crepe Suzette. This is the ultimate grown-up dessert. These delicious Marie crepes are perfect for any special occasion, for brunch, or when hosting a dinner party. With a gorgeous orange liqueur sauce, this French classic will certainly please you and your guests. I hope you give it a try soon and be sure to visit clubfoodie.com for ingredient amounts, directions, and more info. Until next time, my friends, bon appétit!